Yo, what's good? Welcome back to another video. I'm very shocked myself. I'm doing this video this early. So much happened after the Notre Dame game. Um, man, it's just a, the, the craziest stuff has happened in the last, not even the last hour. So I had to make this video. I had to get my recaps. I might as well do it all at once. It says I'm here. I'm up. So let's get it. Um, so we're going to start with the most recent game that I've previewed. Uh, you see the score right here? Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Sam Hartman. I don't know what is going on with him. A horrible, horrendous game. Hor horrendous game. He got outplayed by... See, this is the thing with Hartman. I don't understand. This guy... Just off experience alone, he should be outplaying these guys. He's getting outplayed by guys who are like first and second year starters. I know, I think they said Jake Plummer, he transferred from, uh, uh, I forgot what school he transferred from. Um, I think he, the, the reason he transferred to Louisville because of one of the coaches coached him at the old school and he came here with him, I think, or something like that. But the last like two or three weeks, he keep, he keeps getting outbeat by guys that have no business beating him. Whoa. Okay. That has no business beating him. Uh, sorry about my camera. It's, uh, I think that'll fix it. Hopefully. All right. But yeah, I don't. I just don't understand what's going on with this guy, man. Uh, and the, it's not just him. I, I, the coaches too. I I don't know if they want. I don't know what Freeman wants. I, I, I feel like Freeman wants a he wants a team that's very run heavy with a great defense. The problem is he if that's the case, he's wasting Sam Hartman. He needs to fix his offense and change it where Hartman can thrive. I keep saying this every freaking week. The old school he was at for four years, he set the, the he had the most touch. I'm pretty sure it's even it was in school history or ACC history. One of them. It was 110 touchdowns in four years. He had like 11,000 yards or something like that in them four years. The guy can throw the ball. I I think the, the, the problem with his offense is too, I think it's too simple for him or it's not, it's not creative enough for what he can do. All them numbers he put back at Wake, at Wake Forest, he's not bringing anything, he's not bringing any of that here because he wants to have a, uh, I guess estimate did he get hurt? I missed the beginning of the game because some stuff happened. So I'm not sure what happened to him, but it says I guess this guy had the most rushes, 37 yards. So apparently they didn't run the ball at all, which is why they got beat. But it was also the turnovers. And they, they just did not they didn't do anything to stop this guy right here. He had 21 carries, 143 yards, and two touchdowns. That's crazy. That and then this guy didn't turn the ball over, Jake Plummer, and they didn't do anything offensively to the end. Oh man, this hurts. Cause this, I thought the Maryland game was was going to make me sick. This is worse because not only did they lose the game, they're they're out of title contention. Let's get that out of the way. Um, if this was next year, maybe with the twelve team playoff. Maybe you'd have a slight chance because it is a top twenty-five loss, but it's a it's a very bad loss. Uh, they got outscored twenty-six to thirteen, so they got doubled in the second half after it was seven to seven. Uh, some people are bringing up that fourth down, that fourth down. I don't mind it because at the, at that point in the game they weren't really doing too much to stop them. Uh, they held them to a field goal. So it pushed it to 14 anyway. So technically, you still would have to get two scores. I didn't have no problem with that with that fourth down call. Um, I guess it just had to be a, a better play, in my opinion. But yeah, let's go down. So, oh, so, uh, da -da -da. so my final score, I had a prediction of uh, 30 to 21. Uh, it's pretty close, but it was in reverse. So. Yeah, that's two L's for me. Uh, I, I told you not to take that. Well, I told y'all if I, I would have taken the line, I was wrong. And the over or under was 53. So it was, uh, what did they call it? A wash? Oh, 
there's a there's a term for it in, in gambling. I'm not I'm not too familiar with what it's called. Uh, it's called a wash or is a, a black, I forgot what it's called. But anyway, they they had fifty three. So I guess no no. If you got fifty three, you're right. All right. So yeah, if you got fifty three, you're on the money. Uh, I went I went with the under. If you went with the with the correct number, I guess you would have won. I don't know. I'm very bad when it comes to the gambling stuff. I'm not really big on that. But yeah, disgusting game by Notre Dame. Um, I think they got USC next week. Is that is that right? Let me see some. I think they got USC next week. Uh, yes, they got USC next week. USC is actually down ten to Arizona. Uh, there's 13 seconds left in the second quarter, but I'm not too concerned because they're in like they're inside the, they're they're inside Arizona's 15. They're about to score, so I'm not too concerned with that. It is what it is. But yeah, uh, that pretty much ends our season because we got USC Pitt, and then at Clemson, I was a lot I was a lot more confident early in it, but like even with the way Clemson's been playing, I don't even think we'll win that one. Uh, then we got Wake and Stanford, and I already told y'all about Stanford. Don't sleep on it. This may, like I said, Stanford probably won't have won't have nothing to play for anyway. But it's at Stanford, and it's a rivalry game, so they're going to play the best to to beat them. So realistically, I could see them losing like every game the rest of the way. The, the way they've been playing, I'm I'm dead serious. I don't see them. They could potentially lose every game after this. If we don't if we don't beat USC somehow, we don't we might not win another game. We might beat Pitt, maybe, and maybe Stanford. Those are maybes. And I'm not even hundred percent confident on that. But oh my goodness, boy. That was just ugly to watch. It was a good first half and then it just fell apart near the, the end of the third. So yeah. Second game on the dock. Uh this one right here. So I had Maryland with the upset. Clearly, that did not happen. Uh, it was close. It was, what, 20 and 17 going into the fourth? And they fell apart. Now, I knew something was going to go wrong when he threw that pick six. Uh, I don't know why he threw that pass at that position in the field. I think we were, like, inside our own 20. And he threw that ball, and it got picked off. And uh, USC just scored, so it's 17-14. You don't have to worry about no upset, hopefully, here. Uh, I think USC got a little too ahead of themselves looking towards Notre Dame. I don't know why now. I think they're going to beat the brakes off of Notre Dame, but that's just me. Uh, Talia had two really bad interceptions today. Uh, he got outplayed by McCord. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 didn't do much on the ground. Neither team did. Marvin Harrison Jr. saved them in the first half. He made some amazing catch in that first half. Um, but yeah, man, I, I mean, there's some promise. But we're not a team that can play from behind. I just, even with the, it's it just, I don't know, it's just a, we don't, we don't, it, which is weird because we've been putting up a whole bunch of points, but I, People have been talking about the schedule, and it's very true. It's not the strongest of schedule, but you can say the same thing about Ohio State before this game. They hadn't played anybody either. So, I mean, they barely you – look, you look at how bad Notre Dame played, and they barely beat them by three. So is that win very – is that win that impressive now? I don't think so. Uh, and like I said, this game was close for three quarters, and then the fourth quarter, I don't know what the hell happened. Uh, just I guess we just the moment got too too hot for us. I guess. Uh, what they say, palms knee palms. He's like, what's it? Uh, man, what's what's Eminem say? He's like, um, he's like knees weak. Uh, Knees weak, palms sweaty, mom spaghetti, some something like that. I don't know. That's pretty much what happened. They turned into into Eminem's character from Eight Mile at the end. Er, the early Eminem character. 
the early Eminem's character early in the movie Eight Mile. That's what they turned into. What the B Rabbit? They he, they were Marilyn turned into B Rabbit at the beginning of Eight Mile. Not not B Rabbit at the end. B Rabbit at the beginning. They they flipped it. They were supposed to be B Rabbit at the end. And oh my god. Uh, so let's. So I had thirty-seven, seventeen. I picked. Uh, I had a, a one-point game, thirty-eight, thirty-seven. That clearly did not happen because the fourth quarter just kind of, just kind of fell. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is a very crazy day. All my the two teams I've been following for freaking years. They always find a way to let me down. So let's just go through this real quick. Um, over under was 17. Jesus Christ, that's crazy. They actually, so if you, if you picked up, if you picked the, the line, excuse me, if you had Ohio State by 17, the way the game looked after three quarters, you are a genius and you deserve all the money you won for that. Uh, over under was 56. Uh, was at 54, so slight under. Uh, my score was over. My score was 75. Because I, I, I thought there was going to be a shootout, for real. It turned into a basic, a, for a mostly defensive struggle. Um, so, yeah. So, moral, if there's anything you learn, I'll take away from these, from these recaps. Do not take any of my advice when it comes to the money line and over under stuff. I am horrendous at that stuff. Never take my advice. I give this out. I just give out that content. I give out my predictions for fun when it comes to that stuff. I am bad at predicting that stuff. So never take my advice. Or if you really want to, take it with a very, very big grain of salt. Uh, take it with the whole, you know, table bottle, the, the little table container, you know, you have on your table. Take that. That's how much salt you need to take my predictions. <laughs> You're gonna lose some money listening to me. Um, let's go through the schedule real quick. Uh, so I guess we got we got a chance to get some more. Get we should be able to get at least four more wins. Let's see, eight and four. We got Illinois. Illinois played all right early in the season. No Western. No Western's not bad, but I think we can handle them. Penn State. I think we can be competitive. I don't think we'll win. Then we got sorry Nebraska. We should handle them no problem. I don't I don't give a damn if it's in Lincoln, if it's in College Park. This right here, I'm calling this now. They will beat Nebraska. Michigan, that, uh, that no. Even at home, I don't that's oosh, boy, it could be bad. That, that's what we talking about. I, we talking about Iowa. Was that 2021, I think? Was that I was that the, I, I went to that game. I'm pretty sure it's 2021. We got beat like 52 to 10. I went to that game. Uh, it was a really big early season match. We were 4 0. I was 4 0. I think they were like fourth in the country at that point, real early in the season. Blew us out the window. I think <laughs> me and my brother, we left at halftime, bro. It was really, it was bad. And we got Rutgers. We should beat that. We, we should beat them. So, I mean, we should real talk. If we get back on track, he get this together, uh, Loxley. We can get at least four more victories. So that'll put us at what? Uh... Oh, nine. No, nine. That gave us nine. Nine victories. Okay. So if we if we get to nine and three, that'd be a, a pretty good, uh, that'd be a, a great season, actually, for especially as long as we've been in the Big 12. I mean, Big 12. As long as we've been in the Big 10, that'd be a great season. Then we get a bowl game. We get 10 wins. Hey, man. I mean, the season, the season is nowhere near over for us. It's just. When it comes to the the actual Big Ten, the whole big picture of winning the title, the bit of winning the conference, that I don't see happening. That's just I, I got to be realistic with that. I don't see that happening. So yeah, that's my recap for that game. Final game that I picked today, or that I picked yesterday, uh, Colorado versus uh, Arizona State. Now I said. In the video, in my in my preview picks video, I think Shador is going to have a good game. He's going to get back on track. 
I didn't think he was going to have a huge monster game against him. Like I said, that's just that. Like I said, that TCU game is an anomaly at this point. Hit. We've seen his lows. We've seen that he got the TCU game and he got the Oregon game. He got everything in between. So you got to put everything in between. He, that's what he is. He can if he really has to, he can do it. Uh, once again, they had no running game. Now this game, I also didn't get a chance to watch because I think I had I had the Notre Dame game on one TV on, on my TV and on my computer. I had I think I what did I, what did I have on what I have on what did I have on the computer? I was watching a multitude of games. I had Miami. Then I had and we're gonna get into that in a minute. Um, Yeah, what was, I, what was I watching? I can't remember what I was watching. I don't, I don't remember what I was watching. But I had a second, I had a game on at the same time. I just don't remember. Oh my goodness, what was I watching? This is going, this is going to irritate me. Is there any way that I can? No, that ain't it. Anywho, I don't know. I forgot what I was watching. But anyway, I had a, I had a game on this one too. Um, all right, so anyway, um, ASU's quarterback, he played well. There was no very little running in this game. And Jay Antonio, who is that? I have not heard of that guy for Colorado. Uh, I saw, I caught the end of this. Um, I think, uh, Colorado was up. 20, 24 to 17. I remember it was, it was 17. It was 10 to 17. Um, oh, did I, did I have this game? I think, I think I was caught. I don't know. So much was going on at the time. I was watching both games. I was on the phone. As a, but uh, yeah, I think I said I had this game on the, on my computer and yeah, at halftime it was 17, it was 17, 14. And uh, yeah, at one point, you know, Colorado was up uh, 24-17 at the end. And then there was a stop. I think they got a stop, but it was a flag or something. Um, you know, Arizona went in the store. And then basically the next possession, uh, Shador threw that beautiful pass. I don't know how. He, this is the second time. I'm, I'm going to get into the, the Miami game. This is the second time tonight I've seen this foolishness with someone getting behind the defense in the last second of the game. In a situation where you need to have everyone back. It makes no sense. ESPN, why are you showing this again? <laughs> why are they showing this? Why, why do I have to look at Notre Dame and get humiliated again? Oh, boy. Disgusting. Anywho. Um, yeah, man. So he threw that that beautiful pass. I was like, okay, cool. He got we they got this in the bag. They just got to get in position, field goal position, kick the field goal, get out of here, and that's what happened. And Alejandro Mata, the boy, he don't miss. We need to call him Alejandro Otto Mata. Get it, Otto Mata, because he never misses. Get it? Ah, okay, I'll see myself out. Ah, <sighs> anywho. Uh, I had this score, uh, 28 to 13. Uh, it was much, much closer than that. It was a three point game. They had Colorado at three and a half. Uh, it was slightly under. So, um, wait, no, this says three. This must have changed because when I wrote this, well, when I did the scores. When I looked at this yesterday, it was three and a half, and then the over under was 59. So this must have changed like right before the game. But hey, if you took it, if you took Colorado with the points, hey, congratulations, they did it. Over under was 58, definitely under. Uh, I had the under two. And like I said, I didn't think that's going to be a very high scoring game. Um, but yeah, they got tested, they persevered. They got another W, four wins now. So they're two, they're two wins away from uh from bowl eligibility. So that's impressive. So they got a couple 
Well, I mean, it's not impossible to get two wins out of this. I think they get back at home. They, you know, they hunker down. They have to start faster. This, this is this is this whole trend. I said in my re- in my preview video. They have this tendency to start very very slow, and then in the second half, like in the second half, fourth quarter, they want to pick up the the pace. But if, sometimes if it's, it's, it's sometimes just too too little, too late. You got to start fast, finish strong. And a lot of these games, they're not doing that. Uh, if they if they come out with the intensity, like I said, they got to come out with the intensity they did with TCU. They can compete. They can compete. every game on their schedule. They can compete with them. The problem is, you got to execute. They're not executing. This is actually disgusting. I'm looking at these team leaders. Two hundred and one yards. He leads the team in rushing. We're five weeks in. That's absolutely disgusting. Uh, receiving Xavier Weaver four ninety, but they spread the ball around so much. That's a very skewed number, so I'm not tripping over that. But this is disgusting. 200 yards in five games? What is that, uh, like 40 yards? Uh, that's 40 yards a game. Jesus Christ. And that's 40 carries. So if you do if you do the math, if you break down the math, every game he gets, he gets 10 carries for 40 yards. That's four yards a carry. That's kind of that's on the, the lower side. That's not good. Anyway, we're looking at the schedule going forward. They can handle business against Stanford. UCLA is not what everyone was talking about, but it's in UCLA. So it's going to be very. It's going to be very interesting. That's going to be a very interesting week because they're actually going to be in LA, and this will be their first time. At, at this team is constructed, this will be their first time being in like a super, super major city. You know what I'm saying? Like every other game, like even Texas, like Fort Worth, is that really, is that a super big city in Texas? I'm not sure. Y'all let me know. But like then they, had, like they went to Oregon, they went to Eugene. I guess that part of Eugene, I'm, I don't know if it's popping like that. You know what I'm saying? And they went to uh, uh, is that Tempe. Is, again, are these major are these major popping metropolitan areas like that? Like L, L, L.A. is Los Angeles. Everyone knows what Los Angeles is. That's a popping city. I just want to know what that mentality is because the week before, you know, they got to play. I mean, Stanford's at home, but you get what I'm you get what I'm saying, right? We we don't know how they're going to handle like the pregame because there's a lot of distractions in L.A. You know what I'm saying? The big difference between going up north. So like I said, to Eugene, Oregon, and then you got, and then you go into Los Angeles, California. It's a very two very different places. So I, that would be a very interesting game to look out for to see how they handle everything leading up to that game. Uh, then they got Oregon State. Um, that's a scary one. Arizona giving U, UC, USC problems right now, so that could be a toughie. The Washington State. Um, I think they had UCLA on the ropes, and then they fell apart. And then you got at Utah to finish the season. With that, think, that thing, uh, that's going to be a tough one. I think that that may end up on being on some Oregon stuff because Utah is going to be every team going forward is going to be playing for Pac-10 bragging rights. They're trying to get into that conference title. This is this is the last conference title game in the Pac-10 or Pac-12. So everyone's gonna be fighting their hardest, the two finales to be because you, you no one can ever if you're the last you the no one can ever take away you being the the, the last ever Pac-12 champion. No matter how many years in history, you can always say, "Hey, in 2023, we were the last team ever to win the Pac-12." That's just historic. You because you'll ne- that'll never happen again unless they somehow bring the conference back. You know, sometime down the future, who knows? Um, yeah, that's my recap. So those are my main three recaps. Those are the main three games I picked, scored for, and over unders and money lines and all that. But one game, one game in particular that I, I, I was watching it and I was thinking, man, I hope they pull off the upset. 
But then I was like, yeah, you know what? It's kind of over. You know, they played hard. They played well. But it's just, you know, sometimes stuff happens. You know, the the bigger program finds a way they come out on top. But not this program. The U, though. The U is back and better than ever. There was, so I was watching the game, and it was getting down to the final second. Georgia Tech had one timeout. Uh, they ran the ball on first down. Georgia Tech took the timeout, stopped the clock. Uh, they ran the ball again, and third down occurred. And I, I was watching the clock. The announcer was saying the same thing I was talking to in my head. I was thinking in my head, hey, just take a knee. You, if you time this up right, you snap the ball at one second, on the play clock, uh, by the time they reset the clock, boom, you don't have to run another play. If you did have to run another play, I think all you'd have to do is just run a play and just run around and fall down when the clock hits zero. There's ways to keep the ball out of the team's hand. But no, Miami does what Miami does. They ran the ball on third down, um, which if they had just taken a knee, there's no way – there's no way that Georgia Tech <laughs> should have got this ball back to do anything. But no, when they ran the ball, he ran down. And I was like, I'm thinking they're lined up, they're going to set. And the announcer was like, they should just be taking a knee. Why are you even setting up for a play? I'm thinking, doing the math, 32. Yeah, why are you running the ball? Take a knee. And they ran the play. I was like, okay, okay, run the play. Just don't, just hold on to the football. And they'll fumble it. And the player was running, it's progressing. He gets tackled, and he's coming down. And the next day I know, as he's coming down, landing on the ground, bloop, football comes out. And it's recovered by Georgia Tech. And I was like, I was just kidding, bro. I was just kidding. Don't, don't actually go down this route. I don't care for either team. But I didn't actually think that was going to happen. What? And what, oh my God, I, mean, I guess in this universe it happened, but in what world, in what universe do you think this scenario will go through? And I guess this was the scenario, this was the this was the alternate, This we were the alternate universe where this situation happened. In any other situation in the world, they take a knee. But no, he fumbles, he gets stripped before he hits the ground. Now, you look back at the, at the, uh, at the replay, it's so... There was one camera and it looked like his elbow was down and then it got ripped out, but it was so fast, you couldn't really tell. And it was one replay, you couldn't tell. You could see his arm, with his elbow was down, but you couldn't see the ball come out. But I was like, you know what? I was thinking, because I love Dan Lebatard, I want them to, I want this play to stand. And the play stand. Um, so guess what? They got the ball back. It was like 20 something seconds. He does one pass, boom. Gets the first down, falls out of bounds. Oh, they he, he catches the ball, boom, falls down in the sideline. They get up, spike the ball. Next play, broken play, bro, broken play, scrambles to his right. And it was just a, a fire drill. How he got behind three defenders, wide open in the flat, not in the flat, in, wide, wide open down the post. How. In God's name, did that man get behind four of y'all? If you've seen the replay, he gets behind four defenders, and he outruns all of them uh, at that point because he only had like 15 yards to go. And I just, I was like, there's just no way this is happening. There's just no way. This is just the craziest day of college football. It's not the, the it's, it's just, it was a wild day. I'm not going to say it's the craziest day, but it was a very wild day, and that game just put a, Crazy cherry on top. Oh my God, just foolish. And then we got the USC game going on right now. It's halftime. Um, I think USC will, they'll figure it out. They'll handle business and come back and beat Arizona. Arizona made it uh, competitive, but I think, you know, I think USC got a roll. I think they'll get it together. They'll start scoring a bunch of points. I don't think Arizona's going to be, I don't think they'll be running with them too much longer. Uh, so, yeah. That is my week six recap. Jesus Christ. Uh just so so much disappointment. But there was there are a couple bright spots and some exciting moments. So yeah. 
As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace.